Hi guys. So it's almost 12 in the morning on January 2nd, 2017, and I haven't uploaded a video in a while, and I've been trying to think of things to do, and I think it's just a good I think it's just a good idea to kind of go over what happened in this year for me on my channel and what it all really brought to me. Um and I think the only way I can really do that is go through most, if not all, of my videos that I uploaded in 2016. So, um, I have no scripting planned, I have no editing planned. I'm just gonna kind of go through the list and talk about them a little bit. If you find it interesting, you can say around, you can listen. If not, I understand. It's completely understandable. It's just a... It's not really super Toontown content, but... I just thought it might have been a little bit of a neat video to make, so, uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and look at my first video that I released in this, well, last year, 2016. So the first video I released was Toontown Rewritten Coach Zucchini Glitch, so this happened, I uploaded it in January of 2016, but it was a video that I recorded during April Toons Week, I guess in 2015. So I, I kind of just had that video stockpiled for a while and I just kind of threw it up just to, I guess, be funny. Um, it was a little glitch where I would go into a building and the NPC would be in the building and if I ran into it, the game would just crash. But I, I thought it was a little funny thing. This is before I ever really did anything with my channel creatively besides the full history videos that I did way back in, I think, 2014. So my second video was Toontown Rant Communication, and so this, so how this video came to be was, I was just kind of uh, thinking to myself, and, and at one point, an idea popped into my head about making this kind of video uh, about how people don't talk anymore because it was always an, an issue, well, not an issue, but it was always something that crossed my mind about how people don't talk in Toontown anymore. Like, they just kind of go through the motions and kind of just go through the game. So I kind of, I took that and then I got little ideas and I, I incorporated little funny gags or little corny jokes that I could think of. And I just kind of built that video up. And I just remember getting maybe 100 to 200 views on it and actually being, like, genuinely excited about this video getting so much support because I mean it was just some random video that I made for the first time it was some of my like actual first creative content and I I just really enjoyed that it has over 8,000 views now which is actually surprising because I remember writing to myself in a letter at one point saying that communications video had about like 300 something views and that was so long ago and I don't know, it's it's weird to think about now, but I didn't have much then, especially compared to what I have now. And I think it's it's weird to think that it kind of came from that originally. My next video after that was another just VP video that I threw up. Okay, so let me just explain really quickly. The reason I have all these random old VP or building or boss videos is because when I finished TTO and TTO closed... I realized I I spent from 2003 up to up till the close in 2013 a whole 10 years and I had almost nothing in terms of memories to show for it. So I decided when I was going to start playing TTR that I would record as much as I could and put it on my channel as kind of a memory castle, kind of something to just remember for my time on Toontown. So I have maxing videos uh I have my Cellbot maxing video. I still have tons of VPs and CFOs that I have recorded uh, on my computer that I don't even know what I'm gonna ever gonna. I don't know what I'm gonna ever do with all of those videos, but um, yeah, I just that's the reason why I have all these no commentary random videos up. But um, so VP number 25, Spooky Disconnect. Somehow it has 600 views. Go go figure. 
So my next video is Toontown Rewritten Fishing Guide. I think this one's pretty cool because I, I kind of came up with the idea of making like an interactive fishing guide and it doesn't work for mobile because it uses annotations which is really the downside of everything. You can't really do annotations on mobile still um, which is really unfortunate but I think it, it was still kind of a cool video. It got uh, a decent amount of support. I think it reached 500 views. Uh, shortly after communication was getting pretty decent views, which decent being 200 to 300 views. So, um, it just kind of used resources that I saw out there to kind of make like the best recommended thing for fishing. And so that's why I made that video. The next video after that was Toontown Mysteries, the manhole theories. And this was my first attempt into branching into probably my flagship series on the channel, which was Toontown Mysteries, which is me trying to talk about and solve uh, long-standing mysteries or rumors or myths about the game and trying to, I guess, find some kind of a closure to it. Um, it was only a really short video, only talking about theories about what the manholes could be. Uh, it wasn't really anything constructive like some of my future videos would be from this point, but I still think it was neat. My next video after that was Toontown Shorts, How to Catch a Rare Fish. And this was my official entry into Toontown Rewritten's video short contest. It was a really weird. It was where I blew up Jimmy because he was my fishing buddy. Um, and I know that's kind of weird and random, but it's not even the first time Jimmy was on my channel. It was in the communications video. Like, the first real video that I made, uh, besides the history ones, really, is where Jimmy came from. Uh, back in Toontown Rants communications that I uploaded back in January 21st, 2016, that's where Jimmy came from, if you were ever wondering about that. My next video after that was probably my most one of my well one of my most favorite videos that i've ever managed to create toontown mysteries the original toontown map i think at first i called it under the clouds but um uh, people pestered jesse shell to release the actual map i was freaking out so i changed it to the original toontown map to make it more obvious what it was and all of that stuff but what i did in this video was i simply reached out to jesse shell talked to him a bit through form of email contact and he gave me the original concept map for Toontown Online and I was a astonished and I I put this video together and I I wrote the script for this video I put it together as fast as I could and I got this video out there and I'm still proud to say that I am the first person that has ever shown anybody that full concept map and let me just clarify the reason why I watermarked it is because I didn't want people screen capping it from that video going to subreddit or wherever and just posting it getting credit for it all of that stuff so I understand why people were probably upset why I did that but I was just doing it to make sure that nobody just takes this for themselves that the, pretty much is why I did that but it was one of my most successful videos to date. It That was probably the video that took me from where I was at the time and probably ballooned me up to a thousand subscribers in not too long of a time. My next video is the 500 subscriber special video. This is just a short little video I threw together to kind of thank everybody for getting me to 500 subscribers, which at that point was actually really awesome because before I ever started communications, uh, the communication video, I probably had 100 subscribers. And that was just because of my random VP videos or my history series. That was really kind of the main draw to my channel was the history series that kind of did that. So at March 15th, reaching 500 subscribers, that was actually really awesome to me. My next video after that was the full HD original Toontown map, which was just a short video talking about how I... Uh, uploaded my full uh, waifu 2x upscaled map that you could go and click on and find and download and use for yourself that was the full map that I used in the video back on my original mysteries video so if anybody was ever complaining about watermarks I uploaded that video okay you can you can still go click on it and download it okay so it's it's still out there 
You can you can do it. The next video after that was Toontown Rant Vacant Buildings, which uh, spawned my biggest meme to date that still is going on, uh, Loopy's Balls. <laughs> uh, it's it's been uh, quite quite a quite a time since that video. Uh, yeah, I, just, I mean that's all I gotta say. My next video after that was 1,000 subscriber special, so I uploaded that April 16th. So by that point, I finally hit 1,000 subscribers in just about a month. A little bit over a month from my original Toontown map, I went from 500 subscribers shortly after that video to 1,000 in just a month. My 500 subscriber special video came out on the 15th. My 1,000 subscriber special came out on the 16th of the next month. So it was just about almost a month that I doubled in size, which was absolutely amazing because I just went from like 100 to 500 and then that 500 just ballooned up to 1,000 after my videos came out about the original map and stuff. And it was, it was weird because I had never had any kind of success on YouTube like that before so my next video after that was a little update i wanted to do a q a so i announced that and my video after that was the toontown q a which was actually quite a bit of work to do i had to answer 50 plus questions which actually took 20 minutes of video to do which later on i did another q a and i was surprised how short it ended up actually being considering i did i think 113 questions in the second one but, uh, we'll save that for when we get there. My next video was Toontown Rewritten Let's Play Ride the Trolley, where I made Professor Bart Von Tunius, and I started all of those hijinks on there. Um, and I enjoyed it. I did, I think, probably four episodes of it before. Uh, I think in the fourth episode, I really wasn't too happy with, I guess, I guess, how, how much people actually watched it compared to any of my other stuff, and... I I got comments to saying do more Toontown mysteries or do to do more Toontown rants, so I kind of got discouraged from that series and I kind of dropped it after a while. And also I played on stream with Bart Von Tunius and I got him all the way up to I think Daisy Gardens in like a day. So I I don't know if Bart Von Tunius will return in that way in the future. I'm just I'm not sure. So my next video after that was Toontown mysteries Toontown 2.0 where I talked to other Toontown former staff and I asked them a ton of questions and I got everything I could know about that Toontown 2.0 prototype that Disney, well, the Disney staff had developed and I put it all in there and at the very end I put a teaser that I would be playing the prototype because I had it and I would be doing a video on it and it, cre it created a little bit of a buzz and people were doubting me too which was really good to prove that i really did have it um and i think this was the beginning of my main catapult so my next video after that was naturally toontown 2.0 prototype gameplay which is to this to this day my biggest video on on youtube um when i when i posted that video it became an instant uh, overnight sensation in I think all reaches of the Toontown community that is that was existing at that point so uh, on the on Twitter on uh, on Twitter with uh, the major live streamers or the major players it, it would pop up there and then on the Toontown subreddit there were posts about it and there were posts about my video and I have the files and wondering if we can actually get them and if we can play it and if we can get the files from the game and all of this stuff and it it blew up so quickly and so much that that was really where it, what took my channel from 12 1300 subscribers to what it is today at almost 6000 subscribers at the point that I'm making this video the next video after that that I made was the Toontown prototype download video which was much awaited by a lot of people I just talked a little bit about how you would want to go about setting it up. I know it wasn't the most concise thing, um, but it did include a download link to go and download the prototype. All of that's there. So if you still want to play the prototype, you can still go watch that video and get the download link and all that stuff. So that's still up there. 
my next video after that was what happened to Disney Interactive. This was May 14th, 2016, and this was just kind of a video that I wanted to make after Disney Infinity announced it was closing, and I was just kind of researching about Disney Interactive as a whole, and I kind of just go really in-depth about kind of the history of Disney Interactive and Disney Online on web, and just kind of about how they're Mainly their entire history with the corporation has kind of just been overall disappointing and a failure. And that's kind of what happened to Disney Interactive. It kind of got grouped into that. So if that interests you, you can still go watch that. My next video is Best Golf Sequence Ever. It's a little stream highlight from my streams. Uh, it was kind of just a weird wacky thing that happened in golf because golf is broken. The golf physics are broken, so... If you want to maybe a little laugh, you can go watch that. After that, I did part two of the Toontown Rewritten Let's Play. And then my next video was Toontown Rant Boarding Groups. Uh, I remember making this video because I didn't like the fact that people don't use the elevators anymore. And they just sit at the entrance. And it was always something that kind of, I guess, was bounce bouncing around in my mind. And I kind of thought about what you could do to fix it or maybe just getting my thoughts out there on the subject, and so that's what I did in that video. After that, I did part three of my Toontown Rewritten Let's Play. After that, I did Toontown Mysteries, The Missing Colors, and this video was all about why some NPC shopkeepers have colored gloves, why in the old beta screenshots you can see people with colored gloves, and why we don't have colored gloves to this day on Toontown Online, or well, we, why we didn't on Toontown Online, and why we don't on Toontown Rewritten and other servers that are trying to keep it kind of faithful to that side of things. I did another Toontown Rewritten Let's Play. This was part four in June 5th, and shortly after that, I did Toontown Shorts, The Seven Wonders of Toontown, which was kind of a little just, it was kind of just a random idea that, I, that popped into my head, and I just kind of made it. Uh, it was, it's probably one of my most random videos to date, but I enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun making it. So if you want to see a little weird, random craziness, you can watch that video. My next video I uploaded was Toontown Rant eBay, which was another video that kind of blew up. I got this idea from a subreddit post about people trying to sell their tunes. Um, and this is even kind of going on to this day. I guess I saw like an eBay posting about the autobiography of the tune that was featured in my eBay video. So if you want to go bid on that, that's on eBay somewhere, apparently, I think. The next video I uploaded after that was Toontown Fellowship Let's Play. This was uh, a new Let's Play that I started after my rewritten one was kind of not doing so well. And I did this with Jomides, aka Joey, um, who's, who's become one of my best friends over the time that I've gotten to know him. Um, and I did this series because it was just a lot of fun, and uh, I, I figured, why not, because I was trying something new, I tried Fellowship, and it was interesting to try it with the gag choices and the gag tracks, and it was a lot of fun to do it with Joey, and I know a lot of people out there still love this series to this day, and I'm thinking that I want to try to do a Project Altus series with Joey, once the Altus servers get consistent enough that I can get on and play it reliably with him so if any of you are watching still in this video for some reason and you want to see another toontown fellowship let's play it'll probably be a spiritual uh sequel in some way in a project altus series if we can finally get that going soon so look out for that my next video after that was toontown shorts loopy's balls <laughs> which was my first short uh branching off of the original vacant buildings rant where loopy's balls was featured because that became such a huge meme and it was a little bit more backstory i guess to uh to my to my restaurant so yeah i, I know that was a very weird video so uh that happened in june 5th june 15th yeah so <laughs> yeah i did a uh, part two of the fellowship let's play after that and then i did loopy versus the jimmies which was another stream highlight uh this is where uh, a couple of Jimmy clones, Jimmy, Jimmy, and Fat Jimmy. They all uh, got on the golf cart with me, and we went golfing on stream, and I whooped them. I whooped them bad. So that was kind of just a, a video of me uh, doing a little commentary over that clip. 
My next video was June 21st, 2016, and I uploaded Toontown Tales, I Became Flippy, and in that video, I kind of just told my little tale about how you could use uh, the I capitalized to make it look like Flippy, so you could type that out and you could be Flippy, even though you're technically Fippy, uh, and that was just my little fun story about it. My next video after that was part three of my Toontown Fellowship Let's Play with Joey. My video after that was Loopy's Balls, Always Do Your Balls, which is a, uh, it's a meme edit. This is, it's kind of like an inside story, or not an inside story, an inside joke on, um, my streams. People started requesting the song Always Do Your Best, and then somebody, I believe, uh, Adam Hoffman, he did a lot of random song remixes for me, uh, well, I d he didn't do it for me. He just made these random loopy song remixes. So he always, he he uh, created "Always Do Your Balls," and <laughs> I I figured I might as well go ahead and put like a little silly video attached to it and upload it on my channel. So if you're ever wondering what that video is, that's <laughs> that's what it is. The next video I uploaded after that is the Toontown Offline Prologue gameplay, which was a update that Toontown Offline did to, their, did to their game that I saw on the subreddit and I figured it was actually really cool so I gave that a try and it quickly blew up a lot of people love this video so I think it's pretty cool what the guys at Toontown Offline are doing um, and I think this was kind of like a really refreshing form of content even if it's a recreation of the flash video it was really cool to just be able to play that and show it off to everybody and everybody seemed to love it so my next video after that is Toontown Mysteries The Field Offices, where I talk about what happened to Cellbot, Lawbot, Cashbot, and Bossbot Field Offices, everything I could find out about them, why they didn't come out, and maybe any details that I did know about them, or any details that possibly could have happened involving those field offices. After that, I did part four of my Toontown Fellowship Let's Play with Joey. After that, I did Toontown Rant Lil Old Man, because... Dear God, I know everybody in this game hates Little Old Man. Um, so I, I kind of, I did a rant, but not in the way you would probably think about Little Old Man. I kind of, I kind of defended him uh, a lot. And I'm pretty happy with how this video turned out. I thought there were a lot of little funny, jokey bits. So, uh, yeah. My next video after that was Toontown Fellowship Let's Play Part 5 with Joey. After that, I did Double Lure Curse, which was a video idea that Bingo Kemsky uh, came up with and sent to me, and I guess it, it, it kind of came from uh, his lure would miss a lot. While he was playing with me in my streams, we would do double lure, and it would miss surprisingly a lot, but we didn't really do enough testing for it to be anything conclusive at all. We didn't do enough uh, consistency, we didn't do a big enough number of test trials to really say anything, and uh, even to this day, I don't know if it's true, if it's not true, but it was kind of just a video about that subject. The next video I did after that is the Toontown's Funny Farm gameplay, which was another thing I saw on the subreddit, and it was a new kind of little Toontown game, which had, an, had a, a redesigned playground, it had little new fun things to see. You weren't able to really do that much in the game, but it was still fun to walk around and show it off, so there was, there was that, and a lot of people did love it. It has over 11,000 views at this point, so people truly did like watching this video. I did Toontown Fellowship Let's Play Part 6 after that, and then I did Toontown's Funny Farm Part 2 after I learned that there was a lot of things that happened in my Toontown Funny Farm first video that I didn't actually cover or I didn't actually show off. So in that video, I kind of go back to playing the game and I go and show off the, the other parts that I did miss from the first video. Uh, and I think it was pretty neat. There were some very interesting secrets that were unveiled in that video. So my next video is Toontown Tales. I got suspended, which was all about how I got suspended for literally saying uh, that I live in Florida. Yep. I said I live in Florida to people on Toontown Online uh, years ago, and they suspended my account and I had to devise a plan on how to call them up and get it unsuspended without getting in trouble from my parents so I, I told that old tale in that video so that's what happened there oh boy we're getting close to the end I'm on the first page of my videos finally uh, I did part 7 of my fellowship let's play and then I did Toontown Concepts push gags which was the sheer squids gag 
track concept that I believe I saw. No, he actually commented, I think, about it, and I talked to him about it on Skype. And we kind of, kind of actually designed a little bit more about the track together. And I told him that I would probably do a video about it, and maybe a month down the road, I finally decided to come up with the Toontown Concept series, and I made the video all about that gag track idea. The next video I did was Toontown Fellowship Let's Play Part 8, and then after that I did Toontown Concepts Board Bots, which was another concept video that I did, which was KH Decoder, aka Dank Mickey's idea, which to this day is now featured in Toontown Project Altus, which kind of goes over his whole idea for uh, board bots, a new cog type. Um, what they were, what they are, each cog, their design. And it has changed a bit from the video in the actual server. But I think it's pretty neat to see that it went from that to actual reality. My next video I did after that is Toontown Rant Greening. This was September 3rd, 2016. This was kind of just my take on greening. Um, my personal beliefs, I know a lot of people strongly have their own opinions and vary about the topic of greening, but I kind of just went over my, uh, my beliefs about greening in that video. The next video I did after that is Toontown Fellowship Let's Play Part 9, and then right after that I did Toontown Concepts Zach Gates, which was, I believe, a former developer for Toontown Stride, and a lot of his ideas that he had for the game, like, uh, Goofy Speedway Streets and Tunnels to, uh, other playgrounds like Funny Farm and uh, various other little ideas that he had and I featured them all in this video uh, and I think it was pretty cool I think a lot of people ended up liking it uh, and uh, he, he I think he might still be looking for work so if you want somebody who has cool ideas and cool concepts Zach Gates the next video I did after that is Toontown rewritten species nominations which is just a short video talking about the Toontown rewritten nominations for species I talked about elephant, and I believe I, I firmly believe I had a strong influence in why elephant finished second. And despite it not being one of the chosen species, I'm I'm still happy it got represented so well in the nomination round. The next video I did after that is Toontown Shorts Jimmy's Revenge, which was the second video officially in the branched off Loopy's balls kind of series type thing, um, which kind of delves even more into the backstory of Loopy's. Uh, Loopy's balls and why I dragged Jimmy down from the counter so people don't look like I murdered him or did any other and I didn't do anything else all you people that are with the dirty minds I didn't do anything else so watch that video if you don't know uh, and it was kind of a little funny thing that I threw together and it took me way too long to make it I spent so long on that video the next video I did after that is Toonvolution Studios and Toontown 2, which was a lot of drama and a lot of stupid stuff, and I really don't care to talk about it. The next video I did after that is the Toonfest 2016 gameplay, where I kind of just showed off the first look at the Toontown, uh, Toontown rewritten Toonfest 2016 uh, area. Um, it didn't have a whole lot in it, but I waited literally the whole night to get this video done. <laughs> And I uploaded it literally as soon as I could at 3.31 a.m. October 1st, so. The next video I did after that is Toontown Characters Gyro Gear Loose. I know I said Gyro a million times in that video and everybody probably hated me for it. But I kind of told uh, kind of the whole backstory of Gyro in the history of Toontown Online. Um, and where he kind of featured in things including like trading cards and stuff like that. The next video I did after that is Toontown Fellowship Let's Play Part 10 with Joey. And then the next video I did after that is playing Toontown Flash Games, uh, where I went through a lot of the old Toontown Online Flash Games and played them. I know a lot of other people have done it, so it's not anything special, but it was still neat to try them out. The next video I did after that is Toontown Mysteries The Cog Factories, which was one of my most favorite videos to actually get done, despite the fact that it only has 5,600 views compared to some of my other videos that really did a lot better than that. Um, but I kind of went over what happened in the original Toontown online concept for factories, including the Boss Butt Arm factory, that really old picture of the Boss Butt Arm sticking up in the air, and all of the other factories that involved around it. And that's just kind of my take on that whole thing. The next video I did after that is the Toontown offline Halloween update, where I showed off a bunch of stuff in the Halloween update. And I said a million things wrong, and I was super tired, and I 
I really goofed up that video, so if you want to go watch me crash and burn probably too much, you can you can go watch that video. The next video I did after that was part two of my Toontown Flash games kind of playthrough type thing. The next video I did after that is Toontown Rewritten's Declining, which was probably the an edgelord video that was stirring up drama and oh everybody needs to stop acting like the Toontown world's gonna end but I was just kind of feeling like Toontown rewritten was kind of on the downcline at the, uh, on the decline at that point because the population was obviously going down the amount of content was obviously going down and it was also kind of Mingo Kemsky's idea we kind of came up with the idea for that video together so I, I did that little video about it the next video I did after that is Toontown Rant Can You Help Me, which spawned a little bit of a meme with people saying to P, T P, T P Bliss to me all the time randomly. Thanks guys, I appreciate it. The next video I did after that was just a submit your Q&A questions video, and then I did Q&A 2, which was a almost 30 minute video where I answered over 110 questions. I think it was 113 that I did in the video, uh, so I think that was pretty cool. Toontown Mysteries, the Flash video, was the next video I did in November 22nd. Uh, this was, this is starting to get pretty recent now, but in this video I went over everything I know and learned about the original Toontown Flash video from, I think, 2002 or 2003, including getting knowledge from Jesse Shell and people like that about what happened and if it was the actual canon backstory to Toontown and what we what we should and were to believe about that video. The next video I did was me announcing that I started a new channel, which was Dumpster Dive, where I just play terrible games and try to do kind of a formal review. And uh, you can you can still go over and uh, check it out, Dumpster Dive on YouTube, uh, youtubecom slash diver with an R, just one R. You can you can check that out. <laughs> yeah. The next video I did after that was Toontown Rewritten's plans, which was me kind of just going quickly over. Uh, a Toontown rewritten blog post about their ambitions and plans for the future of Toontown rewritten and I still hope to god that they're going to stick to that because it would be great to see Toontown rewritten finally kind of grow and become uh, what it wants to be and kind of fulfill the potential that that server has. The next video I did after that is the Toontown rewritten Toonfest 2016 update gameplay where I kind of showed off the updates that came out to Toonfest near the end of it. Um, just to even like show like how long it took for that to happen, I did the Toonfest 2016 gameplay on October 1st. I didn't do the update video until November 26th, uh, where I showed off, I think, the merchants in the uh, actual Toonfest tower, uh, the pie people, and the merry multiplier people. So I showed that stuff off in that video. My next video was Toontown Tales. I was a dev. Uh, where I, I told my story about how I lied about being a developer. I was I was one of those my dad was a developer. Yeah, I, I was I was one of those kids. My next video was December twelfth, two thousand sixteen. I did Downtown Toontown gameplay, which is a game by Funny Quackers that he made on Unity, which I know a lot of people are like, this game looks like crap or whatever, but I mean it was one it was one guy working on this thing in Unity. I don't think it was really that bad considering everything. I enjoyed it. It was a new take on Toontown. And even if it was rough, it was a really early version that was just done by one single person. So I think there's a lot of credit that needs to be had or needs to be given to Funny Quackers for even getting this thing out there. And my last and most recent video of 2016 was my Toontown Project Altus gameplay where I did... A little walkthrough through Toontown Project Altus. I showed off things that they had in the server. Uh, board bots, the gag track, all of that stuff. I showed it off. And I know a lot of people are like, Loopy, you weren't being honest to your viewers because you are on the staff team for this server now. And no, I wasn't on the staff team by the time that video went up. So if anybody was ever like wondering about that, um, I wasn't on the staff team when the video went up. I was friends of the people who uh, made the game. Owen was the operations director. I was friends with him for a long time, uh, dating well ways back. And he would also hang out with me in streams and stuff. So, I mean, is it even if it was just because I was helping friends out showing off their project, is it 
is it a bad thing that I did stuff to help friends? I'm just, I'm just saying. But as a whole, those are all of the videos that I uploaded in 2016, starting from the Coach Zucchini glitch video, which was a non-commentary little Toontown rewritten glitch video, to showing off the Toontown Project Alta server, which blew up, by the way, my most successful video in probably months at this point, um, was, was astonishing. Um, Overall, I uploaded over 70 videos in all of 2016, which in total, in that time, over those 70 plus videos that I uploaded, got over 500,000 views, over 5,500 subscribers, 15,000 likes, and gave me so much more than I could ever have, like, ever imagined from my channel and from what I could do on YouTube, so... I, I don't even know where to begin. I mean, I just want to thank all of you guys because I can upload a video and I can expect some people to watch it, but every time I upload a video, it seems like everybody just keeps coming back and watching them and a lot of the time I don't understand why because I just kind of post random stuff or I just kind of try to make stupid goofy stuff and people still watch it for some reason um and i mean i i i even do v mysteries and tales and just talk about my time on toontown or try to figure out something about something i just wanted to know about and it, people love it and i don't know why but you, you you do you're still here you're watching it i grew i i got almost all of my subscribers in 2016 Despite me having videos on my channel since 2014, before I ever uploaded my video on January 5th, 2016, YouTube says I had 34,000 views, uh, almost 300 subscribers, uh, almost 500 likes, and that was, that was about it. And that was completely just from my full history of Toontown Online videos. Nothing else on my channel was ever doing that great. Um, I did CEO number one, like, the day it came out, and that did all right. It got a thousand views or something like that. But all of my other videos, my, my, my main three videos that actually got me to 300 subscribers at that point were the full history of Toontown Online videos. Um, besides that, that was where I was, and that was really kind of a plateau for me because for the longest time, I wasn't really gaining subscribers. I was kind of stuck around that kind of growth pattern of 200 to 300 subscribers and once I started uploading more creative stuff in 2016 I skyrocketed I went from I went from 294 on January 5th to 5000 let me see 5817 subscribers as I speak at the moment on my channel. In one year, I got 5,500 subscribers. I mean, that might not seem a lot to PewDiePie, who gets that much in probably two hours or one hour even, but to me, it was the first real form of any kind of success that I've had on, on YouTube. And I've been making random stupid videos on other channels and stuff on YouTube since 2013 at least. And I never never got any kind of success like I did on the Loopy Goopy G channel and each and every one of you that are still watching this and each and every one of you that have even watched this a little bit and continue to support my videos you're the reason why I'm here and why everything was so successful for me and there's literally no way that I can just thank all of you for the support because I mean, I've even made friendships, long-lasting friendships, off of this thing, off of this channel. Even if anything, like, if even if this channel blows up and just disappears, I'll still have friends from this channel. Like, like, it's just awesome to think about, but... Anyways, I, I made the video long enough as it is. The recording is actually going on for 50 minutes now, um, so... Before I take up way too much time on this video, um, I just want to say thank you guys. 
there's there's no way I can thank you guys enough for all of the support that you've given me in 2016 and I just want you all to know that I'm not gonna stop making videos even if I'm on the staff of Altus or I'm doing dumpster dive videos if I'm even if I'm doing that I'm still going to be here I'm still going to be making videos and I hope that 2017 was just as good as 2016 and I hope that 2017 is a really great year so so before I just ramble on for the whole night uh, I've already made the video long enough I know I already said that but I just want to thank you all again for everything because this channel is here it's done so well because of you you you've helped me do this and there's no way that I can just repay that back and I know that I owe it to all of you to just keep trying my best to make content in 2017. So that's what I'm going to try to do. So I'm going to still be here. I'm going to still be making videos. I hope all of you also have a great 2017. I know 2016 wasn't the best year. A lot of things happened. But I I truly hope that 2017 is a great year for all of you out there. Um, so having said all that, I just want to thank you all for watching this video. Uh... If you've watched the video all the way through to this point, say, uh, Loopy, you're smelly in the comments, and nobody else will understand what you're talking about except you guys that ended up watching all the way to the end of the video. Or if you skipped here, if you skipped here, you can, you can type Loopy is smelly in the comments too. That'll be fine. But, uh, <laughs> thank you all for watching, and until next time. I'll see you all in 2017 in some more loopy videos. Until then, I'll see you guys. Thank you all for watching.